Tech Rabbit here again. Something fun to play with now. So that's a ID lock. Um, smart electronic door lock. And um, it's got a uh, Z-Wave interface card. So you should be able to control this through a Z-Wave um, hub of many different manufacturers. But I mean the main main thing is I want to be able to well, the main reason I got this, I want to connect this to the house alarm system. So when you unlock this, then you shut the alarm down. And possibly when you lock this and you say you are away, then it will enable the alarm. So we don't have to actually control the alarm separately from um, the, the main lock on the house. Anyway, so um, it comes with a rather extensive manual for installing. I thought, um, now we just go through the main parts of it and then uh, go follow me on, on the installation. Um, this you might recognize this is the main locking unit that goes into the door. This goes into the door side. Replace the existing one you have. So this is a bit dependent on it. It says what door standard it supports. Um, and it has to be disassembled so that you can put it together, so that's why it's important. Then you have the, um, the outside part, the um, keypad, not eliminated now of course. And then you have the inside part which contains the batteries. And there are actually quite many batteries. It's eight batteries that go into this. Um, and that's the um, plate for the inside and the cover for the battery. Hold. That's what it looks like on that side. And then uh, this one. So it's actually got two wires that need to be rooted. Now here's a uh, protection cover for the um, unlocking knob for the inside. I'm not really sure why one would want to apply that. Uh, and then it comes with some adaptions. It's got these through rods to go through the door, and, and the length is dependent on this on the width of the door. And then it's got some like adapters to um, be able to get this knob to work. And there are also different lengths, so it can adapt to different dimensions of the door. And then it comes with all with the assorted number of screws that are needed to install it. Also the screws for putting the panels back on here. And um, then it has a, if you would like to use just a simple mechanical um, swipe card, ID card, then you, uh, you get a pack of those. And that's what we're going to start with. So, yeah, so I'll just walk you through the install and then, um, of course, the connection to our alarm system, you know, it'll be what we have, I mean, then everybody has different things. So I don't know how applicable that small part of the video will be, but um, the installation in, in general should be pretty generic. So, um, let's get started. So, I'm going to start the install. So, um, set up some basic stuff and uh, I'm going to, I'll refer to what page in the manual it's on. So, we're on some page 5 compatibility check to see if the lock and strike plate fits and I'm not a lock expert so I think these terminologies are a bit foreign to me but um, so this is the strike plate or the new one it should be in the door and it has a little adapter so if it doesn't cover the whole hole but we'll be going through that one actually on the, uh, on the uh, door itself so, yeah, and then we're supposed to try and fit the Mortis lock, which actually we've got to take out. But I mean, first I would think is to, um, I'm going to filter away the screws that are not needed. So this is, I've measured the thickness of the door. So in my case it is 60 millimeters. Those screws, uh, this one for my door, 56 millimeters to um, 7. So I'll be using those. I'll take the other ones away. So those are these two packages removed from the scene. 
Okay, now we need to remove the existing striker plate. Of course, this will be different on each case because we don't have the same door. I'm very unlike if you don't happen to live in Northern Europe. has the exact same screw like. I mean this actually pretty much looks exactly like the one that came in the package but I think for for consistency I'm going to actually change this anyway but it actually looks ex mechanically exactly the same at least if one has warranty issues or it doesn't work properly then one can actually refer to the one Install the manufacturer's own striker plate. Yeah, my dog wants to help. I wonder what Addy doing with the door. Oh, that came away with that. It's the rubber getting the way. So I'll do a fast forward in video and get that rubber seal. Okay, it's rather a tight fit, so we're just going to use a soft hammer. Try and persuade it to go in. I think I need to get a wood piece to put even pressure on the back to be able to push it in properly. So, yeah! My dog came to say hello. Hello, doggy wokey. Yeah, it's not going well for daddy. Daddy, go get some wood pieces. Yeah. Um, fine. So, nice to go again. Careful with this not to damage it. It needs to go in on the back. It's holding it. So it's in in the front. Take it out and investigate. So, anyway, that's our problem. I should have pre checked it. Which I didn't because they said it would just fit. So, you can see the depth difference. This is the original and this is the new one. 
So, I'm going to have to work on this. I won't record that on video. It's just boring to see if I can get a little bit more space in this cupboard. There's some odd reason they have insulation behind in the back of this hole. I'm just going to try and scrape it away. And then we get the extra depth. Yuck. Heat insulation dust. Yo, yo. Yeah, it's okay. And it, it's insulation. You shouldn't breathe it in. My little guy. Take a bit off this side. So this is how much space we're gonna have to take away like a couple of millimeters from this side. The other side is fine. So let's start with that. Okay, now we're gonna try to um, sand out a few millimeters from here. This is actually quite a nifty tool. Black and Decker bought it years ago. helped for somebody to vacuum dust at the same time. I lost my life to come and give me a hand. Oh well, life isn't available. So. Yeah, getting closer but not perfect. Ah, see now it comes out nice and easy. I think I'm gonna have to measure some more. So, several rounds of um, working on it, and then um, you see we can you can just take it in your hand. And then, ah, the rubber. I oh. actually still need to use this trick to push the rubber back. But, I mean, that's not, nothing to do with the fitting of this, just to get it out of the way. And then I can just place it into place. Okay, the screw holes. Oh, there seems to be. The thing is that it looks like they had two different screws because it's, you know, there are two screw holes here. None of them in line with the screw holes I need for this. So I think it's probably safe to say I need to drill a pilot hole for that to go into. Just to fast the nose. But anyway, there's no depth adjustment in my drawer required, so, um, but we'll check that. Because uh, this here, the total depth, no, that was actually, uh, it's much larger than the original one I had. But anyway, continue. I will just get this positioned. Uh, I'll just drill a pilot hole for the new screws and try and get it sent. needs to be adjusted then I need to put in the um, mortise lock first so I have to disassemble the old one okay now we need to get the mortise lock out and in my door it screws under here one small screw and then those two screws and then there are the screws for the handle on the other side and we'll see if it can actually come 
Oh, everything was going fine. And because I'm a, not a locksmith, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to get this off. So I'm going to have to do some research on that online. So, but anyway, everything else came apart very easily. And then of course every door will be different. This is just my door. So anyway, I'm going to go to try and figure out how to get this out. You might hopefully you don't need to call in a professional just to take that off. Okay, to get the cylinder out, the first thing to do is take the small screw from underneath and then you need to take something like this and actually press a little like a pin that kind of pops out. So then you can actually remove the top to get access to it underneath. And there doesn't seem to be the same mechanism on the other side. So let's see what the next step is. Okay, this is this is tricky. So you have to take the key and put it in. And you have to turn it so it's pointing to this side. And then you need to somehow hold it and lift it up. And then you can pull out that. And then you need to go to the other side. And lift it up. And then that should theoretically come out. And then there should be two screws that should come out. Okay, now I need to um, take the four screws out. Oh, those are long screws. Okay. Wow, that was loose. I mean, these doors give away a bit. So, oh, that was also very loose. So the other side of the block wasn't really tight enough. Oh, is this thing dropping on the floor? Oh, that's heavy. So, from the other side. So, anyway, now it's off. Yes. So, that's that hardware off. And now we can take this out. Trying to keep the door temporarily closed while I have lunch. So. And um, then I'm just going to put this back because actually it needs to be just the so can sit in its place. Check if this fits. Oh, I think I need to hoover that out. That's a mess. Okay, now I've got the hole cleaned up. 
Well, we can see if this fits and just be careful with this cable. Oh, that's very soft inside the door. And I thought I'd clean that out. I have to vacuum it again. Okay, I got all the crap out. Anyway, careful with this cable. And just install it to the bottom. You know, there's lots of space. Just want to see that it actually goes in the whole way. And that the holes line up. Okay. So oh, that should be alright. So far so good I suppose. Okay, now we need to check the distance between here and the side. And it should be between 2 to 5 millimeters according to the instructions. Or otherwise you need to make this adjusted so that it comes out of it. Or in. Hopefully not in because... Uh, this is not going to be that easy to measure. Something like that. Oh, that seems to be too much. It seems to be like 7 or 8. So, I will try and adjust this plate to come out a bit more. So, now we use that screw and the other one on the top to try and push this plate a bit out. I think I'll do about uh, maybe one, two millimeters first. And then I will continue adjusting it until I get the clearance of two to five millimeters. Okay, now I've finished adjusting it so it had to come out quite a bit, so we'll see what it looks like fine when I've actually screwed it together. So now I'm just going to locate the, relocate the center of those two screws and try and screw the two main screws in. So it's these screws and then the two coming top bottom and then there's two that go slantwise inside. Okay, well, it's in place. Maybe not super happy with the result, but at least those two main screws. Now I'm just going to put the extra two screws in. And then I'm going to call this up. Okay, so that's in there now. I've got the um, support screws drilled in there. I drilled a small hole. You know, you know, this is this hole as far as I could. And I don't have such long, long drills, but just to make sure I don't split the, split the frame much and then these two are in and then it has it's come out a bit or it's out a bit but it seems to be sturdy enough at least it's the correct distance to the lock and then you need to check if this is the right way around the same way around as you had it on the old one and if it isn't then you use a screwdriver pop it in that hole there push down this will pop out and then you can turn it around Okay, now we need to um, move the handles from their transport location to the usage location. So. said that the, this face needs to be done. Okay, so that means that we need to swap them in and out. Yeah. 
So with my door layout, the inside one will go on the outside and the outside. Well, we'll have to swap positions. Never actually done that. So I forgot to connect it. I think one needs to actually set it on the camera first. Well, this is the inside part, and it's going to go, in my case, on the door, so the handle needs to come this way with the bevel part down, so it should go in like that. I'm just trying to think which way around it goes. Yep, that should go. Whoa. Really shouldn't bump these things right? too much because they get damaged. Okay, and that's the outside port. And it goes up like that. In my case, the door handle will have the bevel going down in that direction. for my door correctly so and I have a left hinged door picture here so check your own doors make sure you follow the correct instruction okay and then it's preparation, so I need to disassemble to Yeah, I had already taken it apart, as you saw it previously. But here, here it actually says, that, okay, now you need to disassemble it. Because it's transported as, put, as it is, like, together. But I actually got it from... Uh, the reseller that had pre-configured it with this um, Zigbee module, so then he had already taken it apart for. Okay, so I'm just going to get the back plate. Okay, now we need to get the position of the extra hole. It's going to be up here. Thank you. 
here, so we need to temporarily screw this in. Moving through the instructions. Set to use the through bolt. And then this has to be then aligned both vertically and horizontally, which is going to be a bit of a fiddly job. So I will just do that and then mark the hole. Yeah, so I suggest the uh, vice don't tighten too much just to hold it in place. And then there's an arrow here that shows up so you don't actually accidentally put it down. So not the one to do that very easily. That's still a nice look. And um, now I will just yeah, do a little bit of final adjustment checking the distance to the side here. And, um, and we'll make the fall. Okay, I've got it marked, I hope. I'm just going to put a pilot hole through first. supposed to take off all this stuff before you do any drilling but I thought I would like to have a pilot hold but double check before I take those. Now, now we need to take the plate off and the lock in this guy. And then drill with the tendon. Okay. Now we just drill, drill it. to engineer and stop the door from moving. Okay, I'm gonna jam the door at least. Um, I have no idea what is straight.
wanted to remove <laughs> all the bits. Oh, it's through. Yeah. Can't really say if it's straight. Oh, yep. Just gonna vacuum up a bit. Okay, now I can put this back. With the cable going through the topmost hole. I understand, one should just test with the two. Three Whoa. I didn't actually say to screw this in. Yeah. Picture's a bit vague. Okay, so I have to push that pin down so. I'm going to have to check if they actually are still screw this one back now. Okay, that should be then for my door because this one inserted from that direction with the holding washer on this side and the pin on that side. Then it creates the equal distance on both sides. That's what they had in the instructions. And then if, if this doesn't work, then you can reorder or you have to take this one along and then try. At least that's the way I understand it. So, now we would have to put the, this one in here. And that's okay, there's four holes. Except that this cable should go over the mortise lock. And there really isn't enough space up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a bit on this side. And then I think I'll do the same on the other side. Make a little bit more space on the inside of that, on the inside of this ring there. So anyway, I rounded off the inside edges on both sides, on the top. Oh, still have to back. And then I use this trick if you don't want to destroy the, the bottom while you're using these rounded, rounded files. And I put a piece of tape on the other side. It's also, and then I started with the rough one, and I finished off with the. Not so rough one. No, I have to vacuum this mess up. So, now we're back to this <laughs> where we started. So, this should go through and over. And now it actually seems to slip through a bit easier. So, now it's coming out on the other side. And these need. This hole is in the wrong place. What? I don't know what I'm doing now. Uh, I don't 
is that? Okay. Right. Oh, I don't have to take it off. Really wouldn't like to. I don't have to investigate because something strange. Okay, my fault. It's not that hole. And it was in the picture, but it's a very small picture. It's actually that hole. So now I have the damn hole in the wrong place. Sorry my language. Anyway, okay, I have to um, make a new hole. Okay, sadly I had to make two holes. That was my fault. And then we go over here. And this should go over the top. Of course, it won't go so easily as it did last. Oh, come on. Oh, it's coming through. There we go. It's a bit of a tricky to get this aligned up. So, oops, I really need to die. The wire needs to come through at the same time. Oh. the distance to the side it's the same that seems to work now of course it's not screwed in so it shouldn't pull at it because it'll just fall out but um i think we can we can now we can screw this in permanently okay now one needs to choose one of these adapters so that actually is suitable for the door what I did is I inserted it the wrong way around so that one can see the length. And then it has to be a little bit underneath. Oh, sorry for the moped sound. Just when you want to talk. So it needs to be a little bit underneath that surface not to interfere with when you put the big, big thing in place. And then the cables need to be taken around the fastener at the back. And they should exit at the bottom and hopefully not interfere too much with that rotation. So now the back plate needs to go on with the arrow pointing up and the cables through this cable entry hole. And it needs to be put on so the cables don't slip out from where they're supposed to be rooted behind the screws there. So there's probably going to be a bit of swearing and stuff so I'm going to fast forward in the video to when I got this in play. Okay, nearly there. Just a few hints. These are um has thread lock on them so one has to be a bit careful when one starts them up so don't try and do it manually so you can feel plus the thing is it's quite a distance from where you put the the screw in until it hits the um, the other part at least in this door to come together so one has to be careful that it's out you're actually screwing into the into the opposite part and not something else and um yeah that's and then to yeah, the cables, make sure they go around and out in a nice way. But I'm nearly done with this, I have to just do the final tightening and then that's the back plate on. So now we just need to check that the actual lap does work. So it's supposed to turn easily and not interfere with these two cables. Ah, I think it feels very... Easy. 
Okay. I need to connect these then. In the right orientation. That's enough. I need to move it around. Okay. No, it wasn't. No, I need to get a line. All the screw holes with me, so I don't know. I, I couldn't figure out what was not lined up. This is not very hard on, on here, but it's just trying to support it a bit so it doesn't wiggle all over the place but I was able to get it square now so now I'm going to try and screw the screw the main screws in hope it works so so far so good so that works I mean the screws went in okay now I mean they went in okay so the handle works it's not jamming this is not jamming of course I don't know if it works but That'll be the next phase. Batteries and see if it takes any kind of thing. Okay, one final mechanical adjustment. And this is, it's actually, a, I think that it's written up a bit wrong in the instructions. So anyway, it's to do with the, the plate adjustment. There's a plate here and here. But, um, you can adjust outwards and the adjustment is, is with this tool and then you put it into a rotating lock and there's two of them, there's one up here and one down there so then you um, rotate it that way to go that way that way to go that way and the idea is that the thickness of the deadbolt and the door latch is different so then you need to make sure that they're they're synced up and the instructions are a bit strange but anyway the idea is that um, uh, the latches should be as close as possible so that when you close the door you can still um, use the deadbolt to lock the door like that so it shouldn't be jamming now, but it should be as close as possible to the um, flange. Well, I think all doors are different, so I don't know if I succeeded 100% in adjusting it as to the, according to the instructions. But, um, yeah, I'm going to leave it like that for now. Okay, I'm going to put the batteries in. See what happens. I mean, my unit was booted once before to put the interface card in, so we'll see what it says about this. But now I've reconnected. Up at 
I actually don't know how this should work, so it's probably a, not a very good <laughs> demo of how it works. Ah, okay, so I'm gonna put the battery cover on again. Okay, that was, that was that, the installation, physical installation at least, and um, the rest is more like software configuration. Uh, I have a few observations I made, the front cover, yeah, drilled the hole in the wrong place. That was <laughs> one mistake I did. But I fixed that. Just drilled the hole in the correct place. And the installation went okay, as you saw in the video. Uh, the front cover, it has actually four screws, and they're actually the two of the screws have bigger heads, and then the two have smaller heads. And you're supposed to use the one with the big heads in the uh, inside, as inside screws on the other, and the ones with smaller heads on the outside. Oh, they're the otherwise the threads are the same, so I don't think it really makes much difference. So anyway, I powered it up and um, it wasn't working, and um, I had a bit of problems with the display, not really reacting the way I, the way I would have expected. And uh, one mistake I was ma making is that I wasn't actually pressing the um, the button on the inside of the unit press button there. I think I probably didn't press it for three seconds before I started using the display. So. Uh, the other thing I noticed that it, um, uh, that the, um, I, this is just a feeling thing, but I, I swapped out the batteries to new batteries. The ones that came in the package were the ones that were installed, but I took new batteries and put them in. The device seemed to like wake up a bit more. Uh, the display worked better. No, the, the sound of the mechanics sound better. Uh, but anyway, the key to getting the mechanics to as they wanted them manually said that this device will not work if you don't specify if you have a right or left sided door, if you haven't done that definition correctly. And, and um, so what I did is I went into the unit and um, defined that, and then the actual started to unlock and lock itself as intended. Uh, yeah. And then I changed the master pin uh, to uh, another one, not the one, the one, two, three, four that's set in the factory. I, st I still think that this, the front panel uh, touch screen is not perfect. Yeah, so don't get annoyed with it if you think that it's not working or stuff. Just try, re try to reuse it to configure something. Because I had to actually just give up on some configurations and start from the beginning again. It was just like not reacting to my key presses, or, or it was delayed reaction to my key presses, and then it was missing inputs. So just as a hint, so don't throw the device away. It's just have to, just you know, cancel the session and start from the beginning. So in anyway, master, uh, yeah, pin code. Um, then uh, there's uh, there's uh, quite a few settings you can customize. So I, I decided should I should I not go through a video going through all the options you have available? But it's so individual. I think and, you know if you have a family, don't have a family, or, you know how you perceive things. So um, so I mainly we we change for ourselves is this auto locking and then automatic relocking and um, stuff like that. You know, small, small things. Otherwise, we left everything default. Um, yeah, and then you need you have to decide if you're gonna have one pin code to access the how the, to open the lock, or you're gonna in, create individual pin codes. You can also program the RFID tags or register them with the lock to get that to work. Um, and then I uh, was using the Sigby mod module. It was. Um, or it pretty much immediately started sending information to our 
a long company application about the actions the lock was taking, like if it was opening or closing. So I, I think it's going to be rather, we haven't set up the chain of uh, any chains of events or event triggering chains, so I think we're going to do that soon. So, But at least the, the, the information ends up in the, um, in the application, so, that, so the external world is aware of what this lock is doing. And um, you can also, co also we could command this lock to lock and unlock from the application because it automatically just added a section for this lock in, in the security app. So that, that's nice. So one can actually sit in bed and, oh, did I lock the door? And no, you can look at the app and then, okay, now I'll just press the button to lock. So happy from that perspective. Um, I don't know. Uh, time will tell. I'll probably make a follow-up video maybe later. I mean, there's a few videos online about the battery life. You know, it depends on how you use it. But the, the people complain about it being too short, too long. But uh, later, oh yeah, then I did actually download the firmware update application and updated the firmware on the lock because they say the later, later, latest firmware has better battery life or introduces better battery life when you have the spe specifically when you have this. Zigboom uh, communication module, so uh, it doesn't need so much power. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I think it was actually installation is a little bit heavier than what I thought it would have been. You know, it had to do adaptions on the door, and even our door is relatively modern. So uh, I, I don't know, not not really a super easy thing task for somebody who hasn't got access to um, tools. And, and then of course one can also end up making mistakes like I did. <laughs> Lacking the experience of drilling the wrong holes and stuff. But no, but generally it went okay. But um, I, I think there was, yeah, as you saw in the video, one had to adapt the actual door um, and then the side panel for the door to fit this properly. But at the end, I, but now we've been using it for a while now. When I'm making this video, I mean, most of the the the, the main functions work. I mean. You can come and go and lock the door for the night and all this kind of stuff seems to work okay. Yeah, so if you like this video, consider subscribing. There'll be more of this type of content, um, not about app, IoT devices in general, I would think. And, um, you know, tell other people that are struggling to install this or want to know how to install this. And show the reality picture, not only the um, marketing Oh, videos because I've watched quite a few of the marketing presentations also and it looks so easy <coughs> yeah <laughs> uh, and um, oh come on say uh, how this will mechanically hold up is a little bit of a question you know I have children and stuff so they will be hanging on it and banging at it and stuff so yeah uh, I have some reservations and um, yeah well, see you in the next one.